Hello there wrestling fans, I've just watched the WWE Raw Draft episode, 3 hour Raw, and it was a good episode. I, I as you might have noticed by now, uh, I've notified several times, I'm not a big fan of the draft. I think they overdo it most of the times, especially with the supplemental draft, and I think they do it too many times. Annual thing, every second year, every third year would be enough in the best of worlds. And right now there was really no need for a draft because there was a lot of interesting feuds going on on both the Raw and SmackDown that could have carried on. But they kind of killed by having this draft. Uh, and another problem, like in 2008, they had a very good draft. Very good draft, very interesting. 2009, they completely overdid it by having, by having 30 or 40 wrestlers changing shows. And what they did was basically they, they pulled 10 guys from Raw to SmackDown and you thought, great, all this Raw talent now came to SmackDown and they can wrestle all these guys on SmackDown. But then they took all of these guys on SmackDown and moved them to Raw. So what happened was you, seem, you still had the same rosters, the more, more or less the exact same rosters. You just swapped the places of the entire rosters. What's the point of that? And the very few new matches they created in 2009 were matches we had already seen in 2008 before that previous draft. So it was like kind of back to step one, square one back to the beginning, back to where it all began two years earlier and kind of status quo all in all and I'm afraid they might do it right now because I think Jericho should have been uh, on Smackdown splitting up Jericho and Edge now they moved both of them to Raw well, still that's okay, Raw seemed like the big winner here tonight on, on the draft but a good move is they, they moved Jericho, Morrison uh, Raw Truth and Jericho to Raw all these guys can now have great feuds with the likes of Orton, Sheamus, and Triple H, John Cena, some of them. But the problem in this case is, in previous years, what have they done, what have they done next? They, yeah, they have taken Sheamus, Randy Orton, Triple H, and moved them to SmackDown. Which, I, I don't get the purpose. Do you catch my drift? Because here... You move some guys to Raw to have let them face the Raw talent, but if you then move the Raw talent to SmackDown, that completely undermines the entire motivation of having a draft. I think in the in the supplemental draft that either Orton or Sheamus should go to SmackDown. I think they will. They need to do that. Uh, I think the Randy Orton, since he lost to to in this triple threat match, that would be a very good move for him to go to SmackDown. Uh, because there are some things I don't like about this draft. You move Jericho and Edge, both of them, to Raw. Yeah, yeah they can have a continuation of the fe feud, but they could have still been on separate shows, having a match at Over the Limit, the final match, the rubber match between these two. But the thing is, both Jericho and Edge have wrestled John Cena for the title so many times. Perhaps they could have, yeah, of course they could promote more matches, but they have wrestled a lot of times, feuded over the title two or three times each of them would see them so really right now they can't be in the title picture as I see it so that was a bad move having both of them go over plus you kinda took the entire crop of acquisition for Jack Swagger and moved it to Raw because as I said in a previous video Jack Swagger and John Morrison could have a great series of matches over the summer uh, yes, Morrison's career has somewhat stagnated on SmackDown and he needed a refreshment to move, so that's good in that aspect. But still, having Jack Swagger versus John Morrison would have been great considering the match this past Friday on SmackDown, which I've already talked about. And seeing as, I mean, these guys could have an, uh, had an Iron Man match in my mind. That's how good they are together. That's how accomplished, how talented, how athletic, and what, how big of an arsenal of moves they have to pull that match off. You may call me crazy, but I really believe that. And then you, you moved Chris Jericho, whom Swagger took the title from, to Raw. Then you took Edge, moved him to Raw. That's three potential main event opponents for Jack Swagger in the upcoming months for the title. What you still have, you have The Undertaker for sure because he defeated Swagger. You got Christian going over there. You could have a feud with Christian Jack Swagger if Christian stops and acting like a like a stand-up comedian jerk dork and 
you have Rey Mysterio of course Kofi Kingston might have a push but Big Show hardly so there's really feel kind of thin on Raw on Smackdown right now on the other hand Smackdown has had the better talent pool and better wrestlers for quite some time and with Batista who is actually a, a Smackdown wrestler being on Raw they have lost so much recently Smackdown yeah they got Swagger but there's really no one to face Swagger for right now that's why they need to move a guy like Randy Orton over too so, so they keep one of his opponents but that because that's a few that could go on until like June and from there they could have they could find a new opponent for Swagger so as it looks right now but then you had Edge attack Randy Orton and yes that's a, that's a very good interesting future feud but someone of Sheamus Randy Orton Triple H needs to go to Smackdown in my opinion and that should be Randy Orton, I think. Sheamus is going to hold his own on, Smack, on, on Raw. But not both Sheamus and Randy Orton, because as I said, that would undermine the entire situation of the draft. And of course, we could have the, the future feud of Edge and Triple H, whom, despite being in the same federation for so long time, barely have wrestled each other on TV. They wrestled on a pay-per-view in 2008 the Great American Bash and have I guess some match on Raw at some state but very few matches between these two top guys so that's a very interesting feud coming mm, and, and they should move one more quality wrestler diva to Smackdown if I got to decide and that would be Gail Kim or even more so Maurice but I would really like to see Maurice wrestle with Beth Phoenix other than that, I, I so far have completely botched my draft predictions, but it's very hard to know who's going to move. I still have Randy Orton and Sheamus moving to, to SmackDown, but as of now, I hope they don't move both of them. And that would really not make any good for any of them. It would really, as I said, undermine the entire draft. So please, please WWE keep the supplemental draft short and sweet. Not too many names, maximum 10 names. And some of these 10 names for, for all I care it could be announcers and um, even referees or something like that, or perhaps a commentator. But I think the commentators' tandems are doing very good as well. So, short and sweet, not, not any 30 names moving around completely, making the, the, the draft too overwhelming making the, the draft picks mean very little because right now eight draft picks they mean the entire world so all in all keep it short and sweet I think the, the supplemental draft will be today or something oh, I'm just gonna summarize so far John Morrison to Raw good move I think he deserves this he was kinda stagnated on Smackdown so that that move was needed for him I guess R-Truth to Raw not necessarily that good. Uh, I'm not sure he will do that good. He did very good on SmackDown. Jericho and him feuded, and he solidified our truth as a potential future main event guy by losing to him and putting him over in February. I'm not sure he will do that good unless he and Morrison teams so and forms a tag team on Raw. Edge moving to Raw. He has been a SmackDown guy for so long, so it's gonna hard, be hard to, 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 to see him and recognize him as a Raw guy, but that's good. Jericho, I think he did perfect on SmackDown. I'm not that uh, happy for him moving to Raw. I'm not sure where he will head. I'm, I'm, I'm confident that he will do good, but he, he did very good as it was on SmackDown. Kelly Kelly to SmackDown, not much to say. For She isn't the natural in the ring, but she does very good when she faces good women wrestlers like Gail Kim and I think she could do good on Smackdown facing good wrestlers and get educated uh, as WWE apparently sees some value in her she has uh, climbed the ranks and the and the athleticism and become better as, a, as an athlete in a, in a very short amount of time since she came in 2006 where she was completely green and knew nothing big show to Smackdown well cool but I don't know what difference it will make it will not really help the the championship picture there Kofi Kingston he needed that he was deep pushed on Raw and he needs to to reestablish himself on Smackdown that could be his road to superstardom 
in a few years. Christian moving to, to SmackDown needed for him personally. And he could have a good feud with Swagger. Uh, in the long run, I hope he turns a heel. So that's eight names. That's maybe too little. I, I want to keep it short and sweet, but maybe that's too little. Supplemental draft, somewhat needed, but that should be short and sweet as well. Hopefully, absolutely, hopefully a maximum of 10 more names changing shows. Share me your thoughts on whom will you think should be drafted in the supplemental draft and what you think of the draft so far. Great to see the Hart Dynasty winning and what a reaction. Similar to the Bret Hart reaction, people really seem to be behind the Hart Dynasty. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.